Hello, everybody, and welcome. Week 5, Game 5, whatever you want to call it, as we move through the high school football season. Some teams have played four games. Some teams have played five games. But either way, we are close to the mid to the midpoint of the season, and so these guys are starting to get to, you know, know what they've got and figure out where they're going to be, but uh, a lot of people be in region play on Friday night, but right now, it is week five, game five for us in Rutherford County, we're going to bring live and on the air on Inside the Headset, sponsored by John Jones, John Jones Real Estate, nobody sells homes like John. And we're going to bring live Richie Busby from Helena, Alabama with the Helena Huskies. How are you doing tonight, Coach? I'm good, Stork. How are you, buddy? Doing really good. Well, uh, talk to us a little bit about Friday night. You're sitting at 2-1, and one, and uh, things uh, things didn't go well, but things did go well. You, you, you wound up with a loss against Spain Park, 28-26. Take me through it, Coach. Well, I mean, we really, you know, played a good game. We went down um, seven to nothing, and had a couple. Our little field goal kicker uh, hit a forty-six yarder and a fifty-three yarder in the rain uh, to kind of get us back there. Then we were chasing points all night. Uh, went for two when we scored right before the half to make it fourteen fourteen. Then they went up twenty-eight fourteen. Uh, right after the half, and um, we scored in the third quarter, missed extra points. So, end of the night, we had to go for two with under a minute to go, and uh, you know, got stopped. You know, probably the six inch line to tie the game up. It was a great high school game. You know, Spain Parks dropped down from 7A. Very good team, and you know, I thought we played well. It just, you know, didn't go our way Friday night. Was the pace of the game where you wanted it, Coach? Did you feel like, you know, I mean, you know, was you getting the amount of plays or was you trying to slow the game down? What was the game plan against Spain Park in order to beat them? And you thought, you know, guy, you know, as you talk to your coaching staff, I mean, I feel like we got to do this. I mean, you know, and you could talk about all facets of the game. You know, I know that. I mean, uh, historically, we want to keep turnovers down. Don't give me that. Give me something I can chew on, Coach. Uh, what, what was – where was – when you guys were in the war room, what was Spain Park? Well, we were, tr- we were you know, trying to make them one-dimensional. I mean, their quarterback's committed to Clemson. Their tailback's going to Troy. <clears throat> we, you know, we felt like if we could, you know, limit their passing game, uh, try to make their running game beat us, and their tailback is phenomenal. Uh, we held their quarterback to under 150 yards passing, so we did everything we needed to do uh, to be in the game, and we were wearing on them late in the game, and we had had an 80-yard drive to get you know within 28-20, and then the last drive where we scored, it was a 90-yard drive, so really felt like if we could have got that game in overtime that, that, that we had wore them down uh, late in the game and just just came up short right there. And our, our kicker has had a phenomenal year. You know, uh, as you know, I'm a golfer and you are too. And he's beat himself all, up all week. And I'm like, buddy, you know, <laughs> I've missed a many a three-foot putts just losing concentration um, on the putt. And he just kind of pushed one to the left. Um, on a field goal, and so, but it's like I told you, if you had not made a 46 and a 53 yarder in the rain, we wouldn't have been in that position. So, kind of had played the game just like we wanted to, you know, stay within striking distance in the second half and try to wear on them with our run game, and we did all that. We just came up short. I mean, I don't, you know, our kids played great. You know, we played hard, and just we just came up on the wrong end of the stick. Well, and. <laughs> You know, when you start talking about special teams guys, whether they're a punter or a kicker or a field goal specialist or any of those type of guys, they're not in the reps of what you're doing in the, you know, you tell those guys, hey, look, go down there to the end zone or work on this, work on that, you know. It's 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 not the same mentality for those guys that, that run, that, that, that usually are those guys that you know you want them focused on or you give them a game plan or you let your special teams coach you know run through whatever it is for your hour and 40 minutes hour two hours practice i mean but at the same time uh, yeah you know kickers and 
they uh, they take a lot of beating at times because it gets down to it. But just like you said, you shouldn't have never been in that position to begin with. I mean, it, sometimes you think, well, I could go back in the first quarter. If we'd had this play, we'd had a first down. We don't know where that drive would have been. Take it away. Yeah, you know, never one play never determines a game. You know, that might be the biggest play of the game, but I wouldn't trade my kicker for anybody in the state of Alabama. So, you know, it's just unfortunate. But like I said, I mean, if he wouldn't have made the two big field goals, we'd never been in the position we were in. Um, and like I said, I thought we played a really good game. We played it right down to the way we wanted it. It came down to the end. It's, it's kind of the way – we end a lot of games. So, um, and Spain Park's a really good football team coming down from 7A and probably the hardest classification in our state in 7A. So, uh, got a quarterback that's committed to Clemson. So, you know, uh, a really good football team that, that's probably will, will make some noise in 6A and to come up two points short. I mean, you know, nothing to hang your head about. Like I told the team, I mean, we got to battle back. I mean, this is the, probably a quarterfinal football team. We lost two by two. So uh, we got to regroup and get ready for this Moody team. Well, and, you know, you talk about that difference between the 6A and 7A in Alabama, and we do not experience that in Tennessee. But, you know, when you talk about the state of Alabama and you talk about that differentiator and the Thompsons of the world and those teams that are playing at a 7A level. How many teams are actually in the state of Alabama that play? I know I know, you, you know that we talked to uh, our other coach, Burt Brown, and, and, and I, know, I, I know some of those teams that are in there and in his region, but uh, how many teams are actually 7A? And then how many students do you usually have in that high school when you're talking about a 7A program in the state of Alabama? Uh, so we have 32 teams uh, in 7A. So there's four eight-team regions in our state in 7A, and you know it's anywhere. It's like 1,700 uh, plus, I guess, basically roughly in there. Um, as far as what 7A goes, um, the Hoover's you are kidding me. It, it's 1,700 plus. So you know, just to give you a clue out here, so in 6A in the state of Tennessee. You're dealing with 2,000 plus students all around Rutherford yeah. County. I mean, in Rutherford County, I don't care if you go down to Smyrna or you go down to Laverne, you go down to Sturge Creek, you go down, you know, any of these schools I I talk to, Kevin, all them, uh, Blackman, they're all at Rockvale, they're all they're all 2,000 plus students. So that so that's a big differentiator because so. But Thompson, how many how many students they got? Well, I mean, so like. Probably 25 of the 32 teams that are in 7A have 2,000-plus students. You know, Hoover's sitting there right at 4,000. Um, Auburn is that type of school, Baker High School. So, Where's Baker know, at? Big, Where's Baker? Where's Baker? There's a big discrepancy between the, the, the largest 7A and the smallest. Where um, is, uh, where's Baker located, Coach? Baker's down in Mobile, Alabama. Okay, okay. So that's and a, they've gone back and forth between being one of the largest high schools in the state. But like I say, probably 25 to 28 of our 32 schools that are in that class fashion are 2,000 plus. And then you've got the few that everybody's trying not to be part of that bottom four or six schools uh, that are under 2,000. And, you know, when you get into that deal, you know, you're, you're starting 22 are probably comparable. But when you get into 7A, the the backups at that level are probably seniors, junior seniors. When you're six A team like us, our backups are usually tenth graders. So I mean it's it's a difficult um task and we've been on the cusp of being in that seven A and, and mm. luckily we've not gone there. But mm. you know, Spain Spain Park has been there there the, you know, every year they've been a high school so the level of competition they've played is has been, you know, probably better than than what most six A's play well and helena's been a moderately but it is it is growing it's probably going to need you know it's it's a uh, yeah you're on the cusp yeah it, it's on the cusp of being a 7a school isn't it coach with just the growth of people moving from the north to the south and migrating i mean it's going to get there isn't it well, you know, uh, it will be eventually. You know, uh, four years ago, we were the largest 6A school in the state of Alabama in the wow. last classification. We were the third largest. Um, 
and of course we you know we keep a pretty good eye on that and i think um for the foreseeable future i don't see us uh moving up i mean you've been to helena you know it's kind of a landlocked kind of area so um if something unless some unforeseen happens i don't see us moving in 7a for for years to come but we will always be up in that top 10 of the 6a classification well, and, you know, you got to think about it because I care about the kids. I mean, I love football, but there's other sports, and, you know, that would really damage the entire program if you're on that, like you said, if you're on that cusp and you're 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 doing a real good job in 6A or you're competing and you got athletes and, you know, you got people going to state and able to, you know, do and be in the right position. Like as we say, you know, what are you? You're a coach and an athletic director. You want to put your kids in the right position – position so they perform on whether it's friday night or whatever they're doing on saturday whether it's cross country or whatever but when you get into that next level you know it, 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 like you said it's going to take a lot more then geography starts to come into play and you know exactly you know you get penalized because of geography you know i mean it's going to be hard to find a lot of you know albertville's heavily populated but it doesn't have a whole lot of football players Right, and uh, you know a lot of these, you, even in five A and all the way through seven A, the the school systems that have a lot of success are city school systems because all their revenue and their their resources go to one school. Well, yep. when you're in a county school system like we are, you got seven high schools, so everything is should be equal, you know, according you know with the board of education. So. It, you move from six to seven, but not only most of these seven A's that are dominant, the Thompson, the Central, mm-hmm. the Auburn, the Hoovers, they're all city school systems. And uh, it's hard enough to compete in six A as it is, but when you're competing against city school systems, when you're a county school system, it, uh, it, it's uh, it's very a, a big uphill battle. Yeah, because you're just not going to get the athletes. I mean, let's just be honest with you. It's it's a it gets into population and demographics, and and it, and that's where your athletes are. I mean, you know, I mean, how many kids have played for Alabama coming out of Birmingham, Alabama? Uh, the the list is endless. The list is endless. You know, I mean, well, the facility, the facilities, and like I said, the resources, the money spent. Uh, you know, when you're trying to battle, I mean, we're sitting right here four miles from Thompson High, who's like a college campus, four miles from Hoover High, both city school systems that, you know, everybody knows about Hoover. Then right beside us, you got Pelham, who's a city school system. We're a county system. It's just, you know, it's uh, it's, it's definitely an uphill battle. But, you know, that being said, our kids, uh, they overcome a lot and, 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 they play as hard as as any kids I've ever been around. Thank you for the education because, you know, we we in the state of Tennessee, we don't know and, you know, we only read the scores and you just don't know the playground when you stop and think about it. And that's not only from a football standpoint, but you being an athletic director there at Helena High, that's from a a total standpoint because you want all your student athletes as well as your other programs to do well and you want them to be able to compete in an arena where it's a fair competition. The other team doesn't you know, they're just not loaded, so to speak, an all-star team. But enough of that. So you catch Moody. They're 2-2. Two and two. What do we got, Coach? And that's Ed Helena on the hill and going to get to see that pretty sunset hopefully on Friday night. Yeah, speaking of an all-star team, uh, they are loaded with transfers from all over <laughs> the, the Birmingham metro area. I love it. I love it. So Moody is loaded. Love it. Let it go, Coach. Tell us about Moody. Well, I won't dive too much too much further into the transfer situation, but they uh, rumors are you know sixteen to eighteen of their starters uh, maybe or maybe didn't. This is like a Colorado uh, team. Grade. This is like a Colorado team. <laughs> yeah, and and they 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 may be just looking at them on film. They may be the the biggest, fastest, and most <laughs> physical team that we see all 
all season and they're in five I know days. what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're looking at. So keep talking. I, yeah. I've seen that team. Pearl Cone looks just like it. Man, when they get off the bus, man, they pass the eye test immediately. Everybody looks great in a set of shoulder pads, don't they, Coach? Well, you turn the film on, it It looks like a small college football <laughs> team. I mean, like their right tackle is 6'8". 315 pounds. He just happened to transfer to Moody, Alabama from Mansfield, Kentucky. Um, and, you know. From what? Wait, 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 no, he's Louisiana. from Maysville. That was Maysville. There's no Maysville, man. Yeah, okay. yeah, there's May. Yeah. So he transferred from Maysville. He, he's, then he's played football. They crooked up in Maysville. Yeah. To, to Moody, Alabama, which you don't know much about Birmingham, Alabama. That's, that's not the. Uh, not a lot of people just point the finger at the map, and that's where they end up. But, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, um, they're really talented. Um, he they comes from the mountains. They've lost to Gainesville, Georgia. They've lost to Oxford High School in Alabama, which is really talented. And Oxford beat them 24-21. Um, they, they, they are, without a doubt, the most talented team we will see in the regular season. And how did you get into this? I mean, so where is Moody? Moody is over near Leeds, up I-20, headed to Atlanta. Okay, um, okay. They're not far over. And how we got into this, we just, you know, we've had, a, I guess, a little bit of success um, here at Helena and just couldn't find anybody to play us in non-region games. So, you know, we schedule Moody, and then the next week we schedule Oxford, Alabama. So, uh, Oxford's been one of the top 10 6 eight programs in the state of Alabama for the last 30 or 40 years. So it's kind of one of those deals. I mean, you kind of knew what you were getting into, but at the same time, you got to fill a schedule. Yeah, and, you know, uh, uh, we've got some schools around here that go through that. And when you do get success, then you end up, it gets tough scheduling. But then again, you don't want to be the homecoming team coach. So, you know, you, you, you definitely – You'd rather be in the spot you're in and have to look for a game. and But, you know, but you know, Coach Busby, it's always a pleasure to talk to you on Inside the Headset. I'm going to jump back in. I'm going to call old Coach Rankin and see what's going on with him. He's, a, he's sitting at 490 wins, and uh, he's 10 away from that 500. So, uh, Good Lord. He might, help. he might get there this year. Yeah, he uh, he won Friday night. He's he's four and zero up at Boyd. So uh, just a fine coach, of course, in the National Hall of Fame. But we're getting ready, to hopefully, get a hold of him, and bring him live on the air. But uh, we can't thank you enough and, uh, for being on the show. Uh, good luck uh, Friday night. I know it'll be a big game in Helena, and uh, uh, it's just a, such a special place when you're sitting on top of that uh, that top bleacher and you turn around and. You look at that uh, look at that sunset that sets right over the Cahaba River. It's just unbelievable view, and you you definitely got a special place there in Helena. All right, short. Thank you. Go Huskies. Go Huskies.